This is At the Public Library, the video source for news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. This month's show has a special holiday focus with features on Kwanzaa events, past and future, a holiday video series at the main library, and holiday shopping hints as well as listings for children, teens, and adults at the Public Library. December 16th through January 31st, the Main Library's Duet Gallery welcomes Tibetan Sacred Art and Books an exhibition which celebrates an outstanding collection of works published by Dharma Publishing in Berkeley. Located on the main library's lower level, the exhibition also shows Tibetan sacred art portrayed in intricate wall scrolls used for meditation and visualization practice, as well as the technical means of preservation and the human commitment that has made such an endeavor possible. A public reception from 2 to 4 p.m. will be held in the Latino Hispanic Community Meeting Room in the main library to officially open the exhibition on Sunday, December 14th. An accompanying lecture, The Sacred Art and Texts of Tibet by the exhibition director, Barry Schieber, will be held on Wednesday, December 17th, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. in the Coret Auditorium. International Human Rights Day will be observed at the library on Wednesday, December 10th, with a public reading of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, out on the Fulton Street steps of the main library at 5.30 p.m. The festivities will then move indoors to the Coret Auditorium at 6 p.m. for a program which features Oakland's Bukhani Mowetu Choir, the acclaimed Indonesian shadow theater Bali Beyond, speakers, and more. That's International Human Rights Day at the Main Library, December 10th at 5.30 p.m. The Silver Anniversary Exhibition of the Hand Bookbinders of California continues through December 28th in the Sixth Floor Skylight Gallery of the Main Library. The exhibition features more than 50 examples of the binder's art, from traditional book forms to contemporary experimental efforts. The Hand Bookbinders of California has sponsored exhibitions of members' work since the late 70s. For many years, the exhibits were displayed in the front windows of John Howe Books near Union Square until this famous shop closed its doors. Since then, the exhibition has appeared at the Palace of the Legion of Honor, Mills College, Stanford University's Green Library, and other venues, until finally being welcomed home by the San Francisco Public Library. This will be the fifth year that the library has been the site for the exhibition. A wonderful postcard-sized catalog of the Handbook Binders of California Silver Anniversary Exhibition is available for purchase at the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library Bookstore, located on the second floor of the main library. For your information, Mission Branch Library, the oldest branch in the library system, is undergoing a seismic upgrade and a reorganization of space to provide better access for patrons. In addition, a computer lab will be added to the main floor, and the existing 24th Street entrance will be moved to Bartlett Street. The branch library is being relocated to a temporary site at 
2601 Mission Street, the fifth floor. That's the Bayview Tower at 22nd Street during the construction. The Mission Branch is now open Mondays from 1 to 9 p.m., Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Fridays 1 to 6 p.m., Saturdays 10 to 6 p.m., and Sundays from 1 to 5 p.m. Renovations of the library will be completed and the branch is slated to reopen in late spring of 1999. The library is offering free workshops about obtaining American citizenship. Sponsored by Centro Legal de la Raza, the citizenship workshops are on the first Saturday of the month from 11.30 to 1 p.m. at the Excelsior branch and every fourth Saturday in the Main Library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room from 10 to 11.30 a.m. All the workshops are conducted in Spanish and English. All Library Commission meetings are held in the Coret Auditorium on the lower level of the Main Library. The San Francisco Public Library Full Commission meets the first Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. The Finance, Operations, and Building Committee meets on the third Tuesday of the month at 4 p.m. And the Planning and Policy Committee meets the third Thursday of the month at 4.30 p.m. If you've got some legal questions, the Volunteer Legal Services Program of the San Francisco Bar Association offers a free legal advice and referral clinic the second Saturday of each month in the main library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room at 10 a.m. And for you Russian readers, the San Francisco Bibliophiles meet for their monthly book discussion group from 2 to 4 p.m. in the main library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room on the last Saturday of every month. San Francisco Bibliophiles is sponsored by the Book Arts and Special Collections Center of the library. And finally, the library system will be closed in observance of Christmas, beginning with an early closure on Wednesday, December 24th at 5 p.m. and remaining closed for Thursday, December 25th. Similarly, the library will close early on New Year's Eve, Wednesday, December 31st, and remain closed for New Year's Day, January 1st, 1998. The media production staff here at the library wishes you a happy and healthy holiday season and a new year filled with peace and good books. December is the month to celebrate Kwanzaa. What is Kwanzaa? It's an African-American holiday celebration. Let's join librarian Loretta Dow at the Ocean View Branch Library as she presents a Kwanzaa celebration story time for the children of Candlelight Preschool. The father of Kwanzaa is Ron Karenga, an African-American scholar and social activist. Kwanzaa was established in 1966 as the only original African-American holiday. Kwanzaa celebrates African harvest and the beliefs and values of traditional African customs. During Kwanzaa, we remember that while we are Americans, our roots are in Africa, the motherland. The seven principles of Kwanzaa Naguzo Saba teach values we should practice every day, not just during the Kwanzaa season. Kwanzaa is. Kwanzaa is a holiday, but unlike most, does not convey a religious observation, nor does it celebrate our nation. And though our nation gave it birth, it celebrates the cultural worth of a darker, con of a darker continent and the people that were sent. People of a darker hue, people much like me and you. People whose great history has been cloaked in mystery. So Kwanzaa is the time and place to reflect and retrace the history missing from the books, a time for taking second looks. Kwanzaa is the poured libation spilled in reverent observation of the past that paved the way for your people here today. Kwanzaa is Naguzo Saba, the seven principles that we harbor, beginning with the unity that makes us strong and helps us see in perspective proper light, 
the other six that we recite. One day after Christmas comes, we listen to the Kwanzaa drums and celebrate for seven days our old customs and modern ways. So Kwanzaa is our very own. Since 1966, it's grown from a private observation to one that's shared throughout the nation. My First Kwanzaa Book by Deborah Newton Chocolate. When Mama says it's Kwanzaa time, Daddy helps me dress in an African shirt. Mama dresses like an African queen. December 26, Umoja. When Grandma comes with good things to eat, December 27, Kujichagolia. When mama says it's Kwanzaa time, daddy flies our flag, red, black, and green. Mama hangs our map of the motherland, December 28, Ujima. And I help light the colorful Kwanzaa candles, December 29th, Ujama. When mama says it's Kwanzaa time, we tell family stories each night to make the holiday special. When Mama says it's Kwanzaa time, Uncle Pretty reads me stories about Africa. When Mama says it's Kwanzaa time, Grandma and I spend time together stringing African beads. December 30th, Nia. And when Mama says it's Kwanzaa time, it's time for a family reunion with aunts from Georgia, with my uncle from the Army, and with cousins from all over. December 31st, Kumba. And on the last day of Kwanzaa, we share gifts and hugs that last until the next Kwanzaa comes, January 1st, Imani. That's the end. If you'd like to find out more about the Kwanzaa celebration, visit your neighborhood branch library. The library has a variety of Kwanzaa books available, such as Kwanzaa by Deborah M. Newton Chocolate. The Ocean View branch is hosting a Kwanzaa celebration on Wednesday, December 10th at 4 p.m. All are invited to join the fun with Sistas with Gaps, a dynamic duo starring Katherine Parker, and Darlene Roberts, also featuring Stephanie Lewis on harp. Come and celebrate at the Ocean View Branch, Wednesday, December 10th at 4 p.m. The Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch will host a Kwanzaa family celebration complete with Naguzo Saba presentation and Kwanzaa storyteller James Tyrone Wallace on Wednesday, December 17th at 7 p.m. And on Tuesday evening, December 30th at 6.30 p.m., a Kwanzaa holiday celebration will take place at the main library in the Corette Auditorium. Lesbians and Gays of African Descent for Democratic Action in association with the African American Center and the Gay and Lesbian Center of the main library is presenting its sixth annual Kwanzaa holiday celebration. Everyone is welcome to participate in this spiritual, festive, and joyous celebration, which will include performances by well-known Bay Area musicians, vocalists, ensembles, poets, and dancers. Prior to the program, community organizations will exhibit materials in the Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room at 5.30. The holiday season is a time of enchantment for children, and the San Francisco Public Library is having all kinds of programs and events for them during the month of December. Here's a quick look at some more of them. The West Portal Branch welcomes Snapdragon Puppets with The Mouse Cracker on Saturday, December 6th at 4 p.m. Juggling Tornado Bonsai Bunel whips into the Marina Branch on Wednesday, December 10th at 3.30 and then whooshes over to the Anza Branch at 7.15 p.m. 
The Chinatown branch has dreidel spinning games for Hanukkah on Tuesday, December 23rd at 2 p.m. and on Saturday, December 27th at 2 p.m. Join in the fun at a holiday stamping party with Eric Mills on Tuesday, December 2nd at 3.30 at the Richmond branch or on Thursday, December 4th at the North Beach branch at 3.45 p.m. He'll also be at the main library on Saturday, December 6th at 2 p.m. And on Wednesday, December 10th at 3 p.m., he'll be at the Western Edition branch. Then he'll go to the Ortega branch at 7 p.m. And if you miss those, you can head over to the Presidio branch on Thursday the 11th at 3.30 p.m. And on Saturday, December 13th at 3 p.m., he'll be at the Park branch. And these are just a few of the programs for kids this month. Call your branch library to find out more. Check them out. Books, check them out. Pick up a book. You got a fantasy? Imagination can take you to where you want to be. Are you curious? How can you find out? Books, check them out. Books, check them out. Read about stars and cars, play electric guitars, or cops that work hard, patrolling the boulevard, the heavyweight champ and his craziest bow. Books, check them out. Books, check them out. At your library. Hey, Kate, what are you reading? Well, actually, I just finished reading a great book that I can't quit thinking about. And it's called I Want to Thank My Brain for Remembering Me by Jimmy Breslin. Jimmy Breslin's one of my favorite columnists. He writes for New York Newsday, and he's also syndicated in the Los Angeles Times Syndicate. So I can catch him in a lot of newspapers. And I didn't realize it, but as I read the book and went through the memoirs, I actually knew a lot of his stories that had been passed on to me without knowing that they were Jimmy Breslin's. He um, has written for years, starting out at a small newspaper in Queens and eventually ending up winning a Pulitzer Prize for a Distinguished Commentary in 1986. Uh, the book itself is a memoir, both from the distant past and the recent past, as he found out about this brain aneurysm in 1994. And he writes to bring back and to hold all these memories, because the brain aneurysm ended up being located in one of the worst possible places for a writer. It was located near the part of his brain that controls memories. So what he does is welcome back all these memories into his life, everything from his early childhood, a very sad childhood, with a father who left and an alcoholic mother, um, something that stuck with me is he wrote about his mother's eyes turning the color of iodine when she drank. And he writes about the times that we remember him from, from his interview with, um, with Malcolm X and uh, later covering the death of Malcolm X, writing that it was so often that one man's life turned into a chalk outline on the sidewalk. He wrote about going out and getting drunk with Norman Mailer. He wrote about the times of New York on a big scale and the times of Long Island on a small neighborhood scale. He wrote about his own life. Um, he wrote about the loss of his first wife and the happinesses of, of his second marriage. He also writes in a linear fashion about the whole process of getting sick and recovering from the brain surgery. And in fact, in the end of the book, in far too vivid detail it sometimes describes the actual surgery itself and how they cut open his brain to fix it. But in the end, funny, sad, it's, it's ultimately a hopeful book. Uh, he writes here at the end, suddenly I have decided that the entire journey, this dangerous operation on the only brain I have, turned out pretty well. I want to thank God for letting me live and I want to thank my brain for remembering me. It's a great book. I'd read anything of his. Dial a Story is a telephone service offering poems, rhymes, riddles, songs, and stories for children. Presented by the Office of Children's Services of the San Francisco Public Library, Dial a Story is offered in three languages 
English, Spanish, and Cantonese. For English stories, dial 437-4880. For Spanish stories, dial 437-4882. And for Cantonese, dial 437-4883. Now here's a sampling of some dial-a-story fun. This story, which is an old Jewish folk tale, is based on Margot Zemach's version, It Could Always Be Worse. Once upon a time in a little village, a poor Jewish man lived with his mother, his wife, and his six children in a tiny house. With his mother and wife arguing, the children running and yelling, and the baby crying, it was so crowded and noisy that the man was miserable. So he went to the rabbi, a wise and learned man, for advice. Oh, Rabbi, my house is so crowded and noisy, and I am so miserable. What should I do? Hmm, said the rabbi. Bring your chickens into the house. The man was confused, but he did as he was told. In a few days, he was back. Oh, Rabbi, he said, now it is even worse. The chickens fly about and cackle. Hmm, said the rabbi. Bring your goat into the house. The man did and in a few days he was back. Oh, learned rabbi, he said, what could be worse? The goat butts and maas and the chickens still cackle. Hmm, said the rabbi. Ah, bring your cow into the house. Moaning and a bit apprehensive, still the man did as he was told. The next day he was back. Oh, rabbi, he said, it is terrible. The cow kicks and moos, the goat butts and maws, the chickens fly about and cackle. What should I do? Hmm, said the rabbi. Take all of the animals out of the house. The man went home and put the cow, the goat, and the chickens back in the barn. The next day, he was back at the rabbi's. Oh, wise and learned rabbi, he said, how can I ever thank you? With only my family and their pleasant conversation, it is so spacious and peaceful in my house. The rabbi blessed the man and sent him back to his happy home. Now, hang up the phone, please. Goodbye. There's no escaping it. It's December. And that probably means you're looking for some last-minute holiday shopping ideas. Well, look no further. The Friends Bookstore, located in the main library, has a great variety of gifts for everyone on your list. certificates are also available. So stop by and see this amazing selection of gifts at the Friends Bookstore, located just inside the Larkin Street entrance of the main library. And take advantage of the special expanded holiday hours, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 6, Friday, 11 to 5, Saturday, 9 to 5, and Sundays, 12 to 5, through Christmas. Come celebrate the holidays at the main library Thursdays at noon with a free video showing. The December 4th feature is the 1940 classic Christmas in July, starring Dick Powell. On December 11th, the American Ballet Theatre presents Mikhail Baryshnikov's production of the holiday season favorite, The Nutcracker. And on December 18th, travel back in time with the esteemed British actor Denholm Elliott to Christmas Past in this production of the Dylan Thomas poem, A Child's Christmas in Wales. Want to learn how to read? 
Want to help someone else learn to read? Contact Project Read of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4388. Project Read is an adult literacy program that provides volunteer one-to-one -one tutoring for adult learners. Project Read's support of tutors and students includes tutor orientation and training, continuing education workshops for tutors and students, reading diagnostics for students, family programs, and referrals to classroom instruction at community college centers and to other agencies in the community. There are many ways you can help adults achieve their personal reading goals. Call Project Read to find out how. Learn to read or be a reading tutor. Phone 557-4388. Friends for Life volunteers bring the riches of the San Francisco Public Library to people who can no longer visit the library themselves. Friends for Life volunteers provide a link between the San Francisco Public Library and people with AIDS or HIV disease. If you would like to be a Friends for Life volunteer or you are in need of the services Friends for Life provides, call 557-4352 for more information. Thanks for watching at the Public Library here on City Watch Cable Channel 54. You can catch at the Public Library Monday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. and from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Friday evenings from 8 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 12 noon to 1 p.m. See you next time.